We've been on the road for over four years now and that entire time we've been traveling around full time. We've lived in our 2018 Grand Design Solitude that we purchased new and this 2012 Ram 3500 Dually that we purchased used. We recently just completed a video on how our Grand Design Solitude held up and so today we're gonna go ahead and show you how our Ram 3500 has held up, some of the upgrades we've done to it over the last four years, and some options that we can't live without if we ever upgrade to a new truck. We ended up purchasing a 2012 Ram for two simple reasons we couldn't stomach the price of a brand new dually diesel 4x4 truck with all the options we wanted. We did go sit in them, they were very nice. We also didn't want to deal with DEF, and so 2012 happens to be the last year that Rams did not require DEF. We still do have all the other emission systems on this truck. Not having to deal with DEF meant that we had a one less cost that we'd have to pay for. So overall, DEF isn't a huge, huge problem. When we first started out though, we figured one less expense was better. The three main areas that we wanna focus on are the places where we think upgrades and options make the most sense, and that is heat reduction. It's always good to keep as much heat out of your uh, truck as possible, especially when you're towing heavy like we are comfort because you're gonna spend a lot of time on the road in this thing and then ease of maintenance because you're putting so many miles on it you're gonna and towing really heavy you're gonna have increased maintenance so making that as easy as possible is always a good bet and so let's start with heat reduction because those are some of the first upgrades that we did our first heat reduction upgrade is actually here on the rear differential since this thing is putting out most of its power from the rear drive wheels, that's where you're gonna see most of the heat build up, um, especially when you're starting off going kind of slow or going up grades, and if you have lots of weight behind it like we do. So we actually put a mag high-tech rear differential cover on here, and so what it does is it actually replaces the cover that is there, and it does two amazing things for us. One, it adds uh, additional fluid, which uh, more fluid means that it takes a little bit uh, longer to heat up. Two, what it does is adds these fins on the back of the pan, which allow uh, a little bit more airflow and just like pretty much every computer or anything out there these days, it acts as a heat sink so that it gives more surface area to the pan and is able to cool more effectively. That's always important, especially with uh, the fluids. It means our fluids will last longer, they will not get as hot, and they will not decay. This Mag High Tech pan actually has an easier port at the bottom too, so if we're changing the oil, it's a lot easier. You're able to just crack open the drain plug, drain it out, and refill it without having to remove the cover itself, where the uh, standard one is actually a real big pain uh, because I left the front one on, the front differential pan on, and it's a big, big pain. You have to actually take the whole entire cover off and there's no actual drain plug, so it just pours everywhere. So I usually have someone else do the front one. So let's move on to our other heat reduction upgrade that we've done. Here under the truck, we have our second upgrade and it is a deeper transmission pan. And so this is another mag high-tech product and uh, it has the same qualities as the rear differential pan. It is bigger and so we're able to get more fluid into our transmission which means that it heats up uh, slower and it has these cooling fins here uh, machined into the metal which gives it more surface area and so it cools down quicker. And I can definitely attest to that because the first time we towed with this truck, it did not have this transmission pan and it was hot outside and we we're towing slowly up a hill and I saw our transmission temperature climbing. So immediately we purchased this pan and it really, really helped keep our temperatures consistent and lower. So it's really uncomfortable here. So let's get out of here and show you the next upgrade. All right, we're back here at the rear of the truck and 
we're talking about our next upgrades, which are for comfort. And uh, this option is the Timberins. And so we didn't actually install the Timberins. They came with the truck when we bought it and we were very pleasantly surprised because it was something I was looking into anyway. And what Timberins are, are they're kind of similar to airbags. They're additional little helper springs. They're made out of uh, really thick rubber. When the truck is not under load, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't increase the suspension, doesn't make it more stiff if you're driving down the road. But when it does go under load, the Timberins compress down and provide a little bit of extra stability and support and help keep that uh, trailer level as you're going down the road. And so I really like it. Uh, I had considered airbags and just the actual maintenance of keeping airbags up, keeping them filled and then letting air out if we were not uh, towing and just that whole thing was just a headache I didn't want to deal with. And so I'm happy we have the Timberins and it makes for a very, very comfortable ride when towing. So let's go check out our other comfort upgrade. Up here in the front is the next option slash upgrade that I don't think I could ever have a car or truck without, especially one that we're driving long distances. Previous to living our life on the road and traveling 300 plus miles or 200 plus miles every week, I don't think you could have paid me a million dollars to say that I would do that because road trips, although fun, you would always get so uncomfortable. But what I learned in this truck, an option that came in the Laramie package was a cooled seat. So a seat cooler, huge upgrade, and I think it's a requirement for me for any future truck. I don't know if Ray necessarily agrees, but for me after an hour or two being in the truck, if I don't have the seat cooler on, I am uncomfortable, I'm fidgety, and I wanna get off the road. But having the seat cooler on, we've pulled 500, almost 600 miles in a single day, no problem. And a little pro tip, if you turn your seat cooler on, which is just a little fan, and then put your AC on and turn it to feet, it will then pump cool air up and it's a whole different experience. That's enough of comfort upgrades and options. Let's head over and I'll show you some of the ease of maintenance upgrades we've done. As far as maintenance goes, we like to do as much maintenance as we can ourselves. It's a lot easier since we're out on the road and we never know where we're gonna be when the maintenance schedule is uh, ready to be done. And it's you know, just another decision you have to make of finding someone that you could trust to do it on the road and all of that. We have a trusted mechanic back home that we usually get back to once a year during the holidays. And so we have him do a lot of the stuff that we don't wanna do but we do do a lot of maintenance ourselves, including oil changes, which is where making maintenance easier. We have put our first upgrade and that's the Fumamoto valve, which is an amazing upgrade. The first time I did an oil change on the truck, it was messy because when you do oil changes, you have to unscrew the drain plug and catch all the oil. And it was just a pain. But after that, I installed the Fumamoto valve and it what it does is replaces your drain plug with a Pepcock valve where you can just literally open it and drain it directly into your oil pan. It even has barbed fittings. So if you wanna put a hose on that and drain it further away from under your truck, you can do that. For me, uh, I found out right off the bat that I needed a larger container first off because of the sheer amount of oil that this truck has and that I like to drain it straight in there and not have this oily hose that I'll have to deal with. To deal with the huge amount of oil that we have to deal with in this truck, I actually purchased a five gallon bucket and uh, it's just a standard bucket. You can get at any home improvement store out there. But the thing that I got special was this gamma seal lid that allows me to keep the oil in here and keep it spill free. It snaps on the top here and has this nice liquid safe O-ring and seal to keep everything in here and not all over the place. That is one of our tool recommendations. Another tool recommendation I have for changing the oil and making it easier is actually links levelers. This is something that we have for our RV and we use all the time, but these links levelers have a dual use in our household 
and we use them if we want to raise the front of the truck so I can get under there easier while we're doing maintenance. And so we have about 30 Lynx levelers. We started out with a single 10 pack, but uh, after our second week on the road, if you've never seen that video where our trailer almost rolled off them because we didn't have enough, we purchased two additional sets. And so we found that 30 works great for us in all areas for the trailer and for the truck. And uh, the new purchase we just recently got was this hydraulic bottle jack. Previously, I'd always used the jack that came with the truck and it was okay but this is a 12 ton jack and I'm really excited to use it. It's a lot easier. So these are my uh, oil change upgrades. It makes it a breeze to do oil changes. I can do them anywhere across the country and not spell, spill a single drop of oil. Next up in terms of making maintenance easier is the trusty Vier. You know, we absolutely love this thing. We got this quickly after being on the road and we use it all the time to make sure that our tires are up to pressure so we get even wear on them and we don't actually have to replace them as often. Uh, we also have a airbag on our hitch that we have to check the air pressure and make sure that it's up there so we get that extra little bit of suspension travel there. But overall having onboard air is a lifesaver. It makes maintenance so easy, not having to go find somewhere that can air up the tires, not having to find a gas station or anything like that. And uh, last but not least in terms of tools is uh, sockets. So two big important things for us is a torque wrench. This is a Craftsman torque wrench that we got and it is a big 250 foot pound torque wrench because this truck has some bolts that require 250 foot pounds. We actually just had to upgrade this. Uh, because of that, our previous torque wrench that we got from Harbor Freight was like 150 pounds. Because of the truck, we just upgraded to 250 and this thing is nice, solid, craft, craftsman heavy duty. And then my favorite, something that I had never had before in my life, but I have used this more on the road than I thought I ever would have and it's a simple breaker bar. So if you don't know what a breaker bar is, it's just like a socket wrench, except for it doesn't have that ratcheting feature that most socket wrenches have. So it gives you pretty much just a long piece of metal that you can use physics to get that extra little uh, torque in there and really get bolts unstuck. This is, I don't know, maybe a two foot, two and a half foot breaker bar and I really, really love this thing. It helped us out uh, recently getting some stuck bolts off the RV. And of course, a toolbox or a place to put all these tools. We organized our small tools into this Craftsman toolbox here so we can keep all of our sockets and wrenches and everything in our small uh, and contained in an easy to know place. And then we put all of this stuff in our toolbox in the bed of the truck uh, that's a recent upgrade we've made and it is a lifesaver for us. Having all the tools in the truck gets the weight out of the RV and this toolbox that we picked up actually sits below the bed rails. So in the future, when we add a tonneau cover, it'll just go right over the toolbox and keep everything nice, clean and concealed in the bed of the truck. And that wraps up our upgrades, modifications and options that we recommend and have to reduce the heat, reduce the maintenance, and increase your comfort on the road for a Ram truck. Overall, our truck has held up incredibly well. Pretty much the only problems we've had are really just aesthetic problems. You know, we did hit a traffic cone and a deer, and so had to get our side panel rebuilt by Ray's dad, who is an absolute craftsman when it comes to popping out dents or rebuilding the, the body of a car. So if you wanna see those videos, go check them out. And uh, the only other thing that we've seen that has been an issue, which isn't really that big of one, is that my seat has started to wear out a little bit because we have put so much time and miles on it. Our truck is currently at 163,000 miles and we got it just over 70,000. And so we've put almost 100,000 miles on it in the last four years. So that'll tell you how much we use this truck. 
we uh, definitely use it as a truck and we don't baby it, but we do make sure to keep up on maintenance and try to make sure she is looking pretty. So overall, I completely recommend Ram trucks and we love ours. Look for a link in the description for all the products and upgrades that we mentioned in this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to join the getaway gang. We'll see you next time. Bye guys. New to us, 2018 Grand Designs. New to us means you bought it used. New, okay. Just to let you know, yeah. That's fine. Oh, it was new when we bought it. It was new to us. It's just, that makes it sound like we bought it used. All right, that's fine. Kay. I understand the confusion. Okay. I'm also right though. No, you're not. Okay, fine. <laughs> We've lived in our 2018 Grand Design Solitude. You didn't like that? Assembled. Yeah. 2012 Dodge Ram. And 20, people are gonna get mad yep. when I say Dodge Ram. Yep. <laughs> it's still a Dodge Ram, it was just a. So the three main areas of focus that we wanna focus on, um, the. <laughs> the areas you wanna focus on. The, our focus areas. Focus points. Yes. <laughs> I mean, where do you want me to put my hand? <laughs> no. Okay. Back. Wait, over this way. Wait, a little bit that way. <laughs> a little forward. No, but you've got to go this way still.